Hey guys, this video will be about how a car alternator works. Ta-da! In layman's terms, I'll make it as easy as easily understandable as I can for you guys. There's a lot going on in this bad boy. Alright? Now this is a three uh three wire what they call three wire alternator. And the reason is there's three wires is I'll tell you right now. <laughs> One, there's an exciter wire. Now, the reason also is a, it's called three wire because there's three wires uh, coming out of this alternator. Right? The exciter wire is one of them. This is my favorite type of wire. <laughs> uh, for reasons I should not uh, say because it's uh, women and children viewing this video. Anyway, this exciter wire, what this does is upon startup, this guy needs some uh, juice to create juice. And remember that, okay? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna refer back to that again in the in the further down this video. In other words, this guy needs money to make money, more money. Um, upon startup, there's no juice going to it, so use the battery juice that gets it from this uh, exciter wire. And this gets hot when you turn the bat when you turn your ignition to hot. This also, what this exciter wire does, is also like a noid light. In other words. When you're driving down a street and you see a battery light go on, oh, the alternator is bad. This does that too. It's connected to your dash. So that's the first wire. Second wire, remote voltage sensing wire. What this does is, it senses the. This is this is like a, I call this guy the messenger. Okay, this guy tells this guy how much voltage the battery has, and if it's under, if it doesn't have enough voltage. This guy needs to charge it up more, so to 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 charge up uh, to increase the voltage to that battery. Remember, what the alternator does essentially, what the alternator does essentially is it charges the battery, so your car won't die when you're driving, because the battery alone can't can uh, take up all the load that all your uh, equipment on your car is drawing, all that all the power that it's drawing. So, this remote voltage sensor wire. Uh, gets located. It's uh, located close to the battery, and is a messenger for this guy right here. Second wire, second uh, wire sticking out of the alternator, is your battery wire. This you should know. If not, I'll tell you right now what it does. <laughs> this is the big cable, the output cable, which is right here on this one. It says battery on it. Um, it charges the battery. So the output of this guy that goes to the battery to charge it is a battery wire. And this is your, your typical three wire alternator. Numero dos. I will talk about is the regulator. This guy is very important. And most likely, something that goes wrong in the alternator, it's because of this guy's fault. He's the brain of the operation. He, he takes control of this bad boy. Now, the, if you take a look at a regulator, there's three terminals on it. Two are input, and one is output. Okay. One, your remote voltage sensor is connected to this one. Your messenger tells this guy what to do. Sorry about that. Your messenger tells this guy what to do. Remember, like I said, if it's undercharged, this guy has to over has to send uh, more volts out there to to charge the battery, so the regular needs to know that because this is the, the the brain of the operation. So it's going to get to that. Pretty simple, right? Your next uh, input is your field circuit input, which I call field circuit input. Remember, I said. This guy needs power to make power. He needs money to make more money. This is money right here, your input money, your input juice. This is what the regular uses as the input juice, which is actually the output juice of the rotor, which I'll get to in a sec later on, which ties everything together. The juice that this guy makes, it harnesses that, okay? Here, into, your, into its input. Uh, Remember at the beginning, the exciter's wire job was to give this guy juice upon initial startup? 
Now once the car gets running and this starts turning and it makes power on its own, that's where this comes into play. It takes the output uh, voltage, the output power that it makes, and it and it uh, harnesses it and, and throws it back into the into the rotor itself, which I'll talk to in a minute. So the output, which I'll call also the field current output in this case, I call it output. What this does is it takes the regular takes the information from its messenger and from the output of the alternator and pulls that and draws it here and, and regulates it how much it's going to be on the input on the output here sorry on the rotor okay uh, it filters it essentially acts like a filter it filters how much is going to be put, sent to the rotor which will give me my third uh, part here the rotor. Now, the more power it gives from the re well, okay, let me backtrack a little bit. The regulator control gives the power to the rotor through brushes. And you always hear brushes in the alternator. That's what it does. The brushes are connected to a slip ring, a copper ring on this rotor. Okay, the brushes constantly brush, make contact on this rotor, and are wear items. Okay, uh, these are also wear items that could go wrong in the rotor. Now these brushes, uh, the regulator controls how much voltage goes onto this rotor through these brushes. Okay, um, now a rotor in this uh, this rotor it has uh, it's an iron core and there's windings on it. Okay, this also has windings. Uh, the more voltage it gives to this rotor through these brushes the more magnetic the more of a stronger magnetic field it produces now you heard the term electromagnet this is where it comes into play the more electricity you put on an electric object the higher its as, uh, magnetic forces are the stronger the electromagnet is now uh, this is essentially a turning electromagnet which will bring me to the fourth part of this alternator is a stator. The stator are windings that are on this case. Okay. Now, the more power the regular gives this alternate, this uh, rotor, the stronger the the magnetic field is when it turns. The stronger the magnetic field is, the more electricity gets pr uh, gets uh, produced in the stator. The stator, these windings. Now, what happens is these windings. Take this magnetic field and it produces uh, uh, electricity. Okay. Now let's make this simple. This the stator has three windings, which is also called a three-phase alternator. Okay. Now let's make this simple. Let's talk about one phase only, one winding. Okay. Now this one winding, this is what it looks like. You got the you got your positive and your negative here. When it creates electricity, it'll create a sine wave. That's called a sine wave. Positive, negative. This alternating current. Alternating current. AC. And that's what they call a alternator. That's what they get the name from. So now let's talk about numero cinco. Five for those of you that don't understand Spanish. The bridge rectifier. Who would have known the there's so many things going on in the alternator, right? Okay, the bridge rectifier. This is what the bridge rectifier does. It has six diodes in here. What a diode is, it's a one-way check valve, I like to call it. For electricity, it only goes one way, it can't go backwards. Which converts, well, let me backtrack a little bit, alternator current goes back. Uh, front and back, okay? It goes both ways. Uh, that's one way to think of it. So a diode essentially is a one-way check valve. And let's make this simple. Remember, we have three windings, three-phase alternator. We're talking about one winding, though. But for each winding, there's two diodes for each winding. That's why there's six diodes in this bridge rectifier. So let's make this simple. One winding has two diodes. 
So this diode will split the negative and the positive. Okay? And this will essentially, the bridge rectifier will essentially, well, once it goes through the diodes, um, the diodes, uh, the negative diodes throw down the, the negative side onto the case. And the positive side will look like this, the output, into the, you know, the battery output, remember here, uh, the battery terminal here, that, that gives juice to the battery. This is where it gets the juice from, from the bridge rectifier here. Now it looks something like that. Okay. Once it cuts down the positive side, it's going to look like that. Now, with the three, phase alt uh, three phases here, it's going to look something like this. One revolution of this rotor, you get six, uh, six of these uh, bad boys up there. Sorry, I'm having a senior moment. <laughs> I'm a clown with ADD sometimes. So, uh, you get six pulsations for each revolutionist rotor. Um, let's talk about also a capacitor. Now, what a capacitor does inside this uh, alternator is it smooths out these pulsations to protect this bridge rectifier. And also, it um, smooths it out when it, when it shoots out the electricity out of this battery terminal. Um, certain things in the car also get smoothed out this, uh, this current. Now, this is, this, is an, this is pretty much, once it shoots out this battery cable, it's pretty good direct current. It's very usable, especially at low RPM, which is something that generators couldn't do. Anyway, let's not talk about that right now. Um, uh, certain instruments inside your car, electrical doodads like the radiator, that has uh, an extra filter in it to s further smooth this out. Okay. So it doesn't damage any of its components. Now, number 07 is a diode trio. Well, that's this trio and that's this diode. There's three of the three diodes here, three check valves, one for each phase. And what that does is this sends the field current, the positive field current, remember positive, to this regulator right here. Now we're coming full circle. So the output of this rotor sends the field current, the positive field current to this regulator. You know, more, need money to make more money? So then uh, the regular takes this current and through the brushes onto the rotor from the, to the slip ring, copper slip rings, it gives it more power, less power from this field current. Right there. And that is how a gen uh, old car alternator works. I think I covered the basics, and if you ever wonder what this, this thing here is, that's a fan. It cools down the alternator, because you don't want it to burn up in there. It gets kind of hot. And I hope uh, now you learned something. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe underneath. It's free to subscribe, and if I ever make any more videos, you could watch them. It will keep you updated. Thank you, and have a nice day. Please come again. Bye.